Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and part three of the Vulture Stone, Pillar 43 at Gobekli Tepe is a map. I'd like to take a minute to dedicate this video to Klaus Schmidt and his family. It is Christmas, Frohe Weihnachten, much respect to him for uncovering this to the world and showing us these treasures. Today I'm going to do a quick overview of where we've been and get right into the top part of the pillar. So the Natufians themselves lived in this area. And we know that. On the pillar, they describe an area that's about 600 miles by 200 miles, okay? From way over here in Turkey to the Dead Sea there. Now, they would have known about other peoples in here. This is just what they control, the natural resources and the people in that area. And it's an actually a very strategic part of the world. So what they did is over time with their maps and everything, they realized they it looked like shapes and they gave them shapes so they can communicate too and where to meet, right? Uh, so, but to fit it on the pillar, what they did is they took the map here, these animals here, and, and folded it this way, okay? Then took these shapes here and scrunched it over to fit onto the pillar. And it wouldn't be a problem because folding a map, it's still a map. You can still read a map even when it's folded. So it essentially turned what, what is normally just the coast, the Jordan River and, and the, their coast is normally north and south this way. They basically just pivoted it down that way. And last week we did, or, or in the last video, we did an overview of that part of it. And, and to do that, you can do it on your phone. Okay, we can do that quickly. Just orient it north and south. You can already start to see the dog and everything, right? You see that the dog's here. Here's the, where the snake, here's the scorpion. Here, here's a better view if I do it this way. So... The Golan Heights would be the vulture. Just go on your phone and you'll see the, the structure there. We, in the last video, we talked about the, the circle that's right there. Here is the Scorpion Mountains out here. It's about 50 miles, right? There would have been a, probably somebody in charge like the Scorpion King, you know? Um, the snake is this piece right here. It's the mountains around Amman here, okay? So it includes the Jordan River and then out here into Urbid. So it's about the peoples that live there, right? And then down here would be the mountains of coming off the Dead Sea and the, the happy, the beaked animal is in between the legs of the dog. So these would have been individual sort of states like or individual peoples, right? All around this map. So then today we're going to talk about this top part and, uh, and we'll see how that interacts. So let's re, there we go, orient the map the correct way, and let's take a look at it. So, on the pillar, it's saying that the head of the vulture is up against some mountains, right? And then you see that. So yeah, it's, so let's go through it quickly. It's, you can see all of it right here, right? You've got the anti-Lebanon mountains. Look at two big mountains right there. One of them is Mount Hermon. And what's the other one? Talat Musa, is that how you say it? There are the two of them right there. Now look underneath, look at, at the bottom, what they drew. Two straight lines that go to the back end of this bird. Well, there's the back end of the bird if you saw the last couple videos. Right here is where it ends, okay? So the five different things you have here is the anti-Lebanon mountains, the Baca Valley, see where it's, it's small and starts bigger there. Then you've got the uh, uh, anti excuse me, the Mount Lebanon mountains here, right up against the coast. Then you've got the, the Mediterranean with big waves, and then the mountains of Cyprus in the, in the distance, and you can see that. All in the right place, all in the right sequence. And I drew it right here. So I, I left the vulture in here so you can see that. And here I just drew it the way it is on the map, okay, with the two big mountains. There's the two big mountains, the uh, Baca Valley, okay, and the mountains here. Every, everything is correct and in the right sequence. And there would be the... Uh, anti-Lebanon mountains. So you wouldn't have to have an aerial view to see Mount Hermon and Talat Musa, right? You wouldn't. But let's talk about the rest of it. It says that, see the valley here, the squares? It's small here and gets bigger and comes over. So yes, yeah, so you have the, the mountains here. Here is the head of the vulture. See the wing of the vulture? Well, the Baca Valley starts small, gets big, and comes out to Homs here. That's that part there. Then you see the mountains coming across the, the, the Mediterranean, right on the coast. And what it says is the mountains stop right here. So if you come around the head of the, of the, of the bird, right, of the vulture, it stops and watch this. I know I'm going fast, but there's a reason, there's a time limit. Okay, 
So if you, here's the head of the bird, right, of the vulture. So it says it would stop, and it does right here. Here's the Valley of Jezreel right there, the mountain stop, and here is Nazareth. Perfect day. Today is Christmas. Jesus of Nazareth right there, okay? And that's where it stops, right here on the pillar. That is their world. And, that, and when we see the evidence of the Natufians, that's where they lived. Then the Mediterranean is right here with these giant waves. Now, when it comes to water, the way you show water, to draw water, to draw water, I should say, you either have to paint it blue or make it move, okay? It has to be moving or you wouldn't know what you were looking at, okay? So right now, we only know this is water is because Google painted it blue. Same with the Dead Sea and the Sea of Galilee. If you go to satellite image, Again, they have to paint it blue. You wouldn't know. If that wasn't blue, you wouldn't know where the land ends and where things start. So you have to make things move, right? And that's what they did. These, this is the Mediterranean. These are giant waves, okay? Pushing man, large beast, small beast, all right? That's what they're showing. And then in the distance, see the mountains up in here? Well, you've got mountains. They would see the, the mountains in the distance. So the, so the water is moving, and there's only one force in this area that can move large animals like that, and that is waves and water. It, it's also rough. Look, at it. people call these handbags, but the, the handles are all different. Look, they don't start and stop at the end of the bag or even in the same spot. They're also in a different shape, each one, just like waves are. Every one is different, right? Um, so that, that's what this is, and it is depicting a flood. Something happened here. Absolutely, this is a story. Now, this is chiseled in stone, so the story had to have been older than this. And it could have been more because in the, in the younger Dryas period, because of the melting glaciers and there was also a comet strike, we believe, um, it would have caused several floods. And so the story would have been passed down, all right, from one, from one uh, um, generation to another. So there you go. Everything on the pillar is right here on, on, on the ground, still on Google Maps, okay? And so I went ahead and drew, drew, I tried to be accurate with the handles, so to speak, but these are waves. Again, you can see that. So right down the coast, look where they are. I mean, you wouldn't have handbags there, everybody. It'd be waves, one after another. If you saw a tsunami, uh, tidal waves, that's exactly what happens. And what comes in and out of every wave, especially in a giant flood, are dead animals. Notice how each one of them is being dropped on their heads. So this is, a, I believe, the original story of the flood. But getting back to the facts, as you can see, everything on the pillar exists on land in the right sequence. Now we're going to talk about the other part of here in the next video and how it comes, how it comes together. But this one I wanted to stay uh, focused on the top part of the pillar. The, well, I get ahead of myself. Here's a little, <laughs> okay, I gave you a sneak preview. Okay, here's the second part, how the animals are used a second time. I caught myself here. All right, see the Euphrates, so on the, in, the first, in the first drawing that you saw, and let me go back, might as well show you. Here is the bird. If you saw the previous videos, you see it too. Here's the bird and the fish. It's used this way once. And here's a sneak preview for you. When you turn the, the, the map north and south this way, there you go. The animals are reused again. I didn't do this picture in the previous video, but I'm gonna do it in the next one. I'll explain it a little better, okay? So as far as today, that's two thirds of the map detailed, okay? It's also 100% of the map uh, uh, shown to you in the right sequence. The, this is just a map, it's just a plain old map. I'm sorry that it's not uh, you know, sexed up as far as, a, as some sort of astrology signs or, or with solstices or anything like that or using astronomy or religion, but it's not. Um, I'm not even sure they could afford religion at this point. I mean, I believe they had God, they believed in God, but uh, religion would have come a little later and we can talk about that in the last summary. So this is the uh, Vulture Stone Part 3. I will work on Part 4 and try to get it out next week. Okay, so everybody, I hope you enjoy it. Please leave, leave some comments, share it with other people, and be kind, of course. Merry Christmas, everybody. Prost!